Hello everyone. Today I'll be showing you through a method to memorizing our brain anatomy and their executive functions. Now before we get started I do need to introduce two anatomical terms and that is gyrus and sulcus. Now our brain consists of numerous dips and ridges we call gyrus and sulcus. Sulcus translates exactly to Latin meaning trench and they will represent the dips of our brain. Gyrus derives from the Greek term gyro or gyro, meaning coil, and they will represent the coils of our brain or the ridges of our brain. Now, in order to memorize our brain anatomy, we must first be able to visualize our brain. And to do that, we will create a model out of our fists. So first, we need to grab two pieces of paper, which we'll use later on, and scrunch them up and form two fists. Then we need to interlock our arms. This, our fists will represent our brain. These two fingers in the front, our pinky finger and our ring finger, represent our frontal lobe. Now the frontal lobe has many specializations. That includes executive functions, such as um, decision making, it contains our personality, it's responsible for our personality. And it also contains a speech, it contains an area called the Broca's speech area, which is crucial for our speech and also our sense of smell, which we'll go through later. What we'll be focusing on today is the gyrus, marked in red here, the pre-central gyrus. Now our precentral gyrus, located in the frontal lobe, is responsible for somatic motor function. Now it's okay if you don't understand what that means, but somatic motor is our voluntary movement. So if, I were to, if we were to elbow flex or elbow extend, or flex and extend at the levels of the carpals, that is derivated from this, that is derivated from the fibers associated with that gyrus there. Now, the frontal lobe, as we've just gone through, is split to the next lobe, by the central sulcus. The next lobe that we will be going through is the parietal lobe, represented by our middle finger and our index finger. Um, the parietal lobe and the frontal lobe are split at the level of this sulcus here, the central sulcus. So that will be represented by this line in between our fingers here. Now, the parietal lobe has many specializations as well, mainly for higher cognitive functions. And that includes solving for math, reading, writing, as well as our spatial awareness. <coughs> what we'll be focusing on is the gyrus colored in, in blue. That is our post-central gyrus. Now our post-central gyrus is responsible for somatosensation. So if I were to be touched, or if you were to be touched, then that will go, that message will be sent up through the fibers at the post-central gyrus. It is also responsible for proprioception and being able to feel temperature. Now the lobe here at the back of our head is called the occipital lobe. Now the occipital lobe is split by the parietal lobe at the parietal occipital sulcus and that is represented by the pink line there. Now our occipital lobe is responsible mainly for our ability to see. We have receptors in our eyes that detect light, that send a message from the optic nerve all the way to the back of our brain. And in our brain anatomy, we, although we don't have a finger in the back of our hand, these look like eyes. That's why we remember the back of our brain as the brain responsible for seeing things. So the idiom, have eyes on the back of your head, holds true to everyone, because technically we visually process everything at the back of our head. Now the last surface anatomy lobe is the temporal lobe represented by our thumb. The temporal lobe is split by the parietal and frontal lobe at the lateral sulcus, which you will need to know, also known as the sylvian fissure, for later on. It's a very important, important sulcus. Now, the temporal lobe is responsible for our ability to hear. If you look at our brain anatomy, it looks like the ears of our brain. 
and that's what that's what it's responsible for. It contains the gyrus called the superior temporal gyrus or the superior temporal gyrus that contains the auditory cortex. Now you might be wondering why we had to scrunch up two pieces of paper and that is because it contains a hidden lobe within us or represents the hidden lobe, the insula. If we open our brain at the lateral sulcus, you will be able to see the insula. Now the insula contains the gustatory cortex, which is responsible for our sense of taste. Gustatory derives from the Latin word gustare, which means to taste. And that is what the insula is responsible for, our hidden lobe. Now, now you, there's one more lobe we need to know, and if we throw away the insula, behind the insula, the most medial compartment of our brain, it contains the limbic lobe, and it's represented by this line of our palm that looks like a curve of the limbic lobe. Now our limbic lobe is interesting because it's responsible for numerous things. That includes memory, that's responsible for memory, emotional processing, and our ability to learn. So to recount, we have our front two fingers representing our frontal lobe, the precentral gyrus represented by the red here, the central sulcus, the postcentral gyrus represented by the blue, the parietal occipital sulcus, the parietal lobe, oh sorry, the occipital lobe, then the lateral sulcus, and then our temporal lobe with our superior temporal gyrus. Then we have our insula and our limbic lobe. Some other things that we know, that we do need to note is other um, features of the brain. So right along the cut there between our two hands is the longitudinal fissure. That just splits the left and right hemisphere. However, where our hands touch, that is what we call our corpus callosum. People remember the corpus callosum as the core plus callosum because it is responsible for the combination or the fibers that combine our left and right hemisphere. Our arms represent the spinal cord and our wrist represents the brainstem. Now you might be wondering why we have to interconnect our, or interlink our hands. And that is because of hemispheric lateralization. What that means essentially is that our left lobe acts on the right side of our body while it is the right lobe acts on the left side of our body. And that's what the crossover there represents. Now, some important anatomical features of our brain that we might need to look out for is this pink representing our olfactory cortex and that contains the olfactory nerve responsible for our ability to smell. Um, it's projected underneath the brain because it needs to be able to be projected downwards towards our etmoid bone or our nose. We also have this circle here representing Broca's speech area. It's usually larger but the Broca's speech area is found in the frontal lobe which is essential for our ability to speak. Those are all the lobes of our brain, and that is all the important anatomical features of our brain.